So, this film begins with seven close friends, their laughter echoing through the corridors of an ancient mansion they had rented for a birthday celebration. The night was young, and their spirits were high. But as the party roared on, the drinks ran out. They looked at each other, disappointment creeping in. It wasn't just any party, it was a celebration of friendship, of youth. The mansion stood far from the city, isolated and quiet. They desperately wanted more drinks, and an unsettling idea crossed their minds. This mansion is huge, surely there must be something hidden here. Driven by curiosity and excitement, they began to explore the eerie corners of the mansion, each step filling the air with a sense of foreboding. As they neared the basement, a chill seemed to sweep through the group. The door was locked. A sign, perhaps. They should have turned back, but the thirst for adventure overwhelmed their caution. Their laughter echoed as they broke the lock and ventured into the unknown. Inside, a layer of dust covered everything, adding to the mansion's mystery. It felt like stepping back in time. Among the relics of the past, they found an old box. It looked ordinary, but its contents were far from it. Inside, there were tarot cards, ancient, worn, and unnerving. Each card seemed to whisper dark secrets. These weren't just ordinary cards. They held the weight of fate, destiny, and something darker. The designs were strange, almost as if someone had drawn them with trembling hands. Haley, the one who could read the tarot, hesitated. She felt the weight of something ominous. But her friends, caught up in the excitement, insisted. After all, it was her friend's birthday. Reluctantly, Haley agreed, though an uneasy feeling gnawed at her. They gathered upstairs, the air thick with anticipation. Haley arranged the twelve cards in a circle, the final, most important thirteenth card placed at the center. It glowed in the dim light, full of untold significance. The first card was for the birthday girl. The High Priestess. Haley's voice wavered as she told her, You are curious, too curious. This curiosity can lead to trouble, a dangerous fall. The words lingered in the air like a warning, but no one heeded them. As Haley continued, her own card appeared. The hangman. Problems with technology, she said. But something in her voice hinted at more, something unspeakable. Paige, the next friend, drew the magician. Haley's voice trembled as she warned, someone will try to tear you apart. You will be trapped. Paige shrugged it off, but the tension in the room grew thicker. Then Paxton went to the bathroom, claiming he saw someone on the balcony. When he flicked on the light, no one was there. Was it his imagination? Or was something sinister already watching them? One by one, the readings grew darker. Paige's friend refused to have his card read after a fight, but Paxton took his place. The fool. Haley's eyes widened as she told him, You will feel trapped, but trust those who love you. When one door closes, another will open. Her words sent shivers down everyone's spine. Finally, Haley's friend received his card. The devil. A heavy silence fell over the group. Haley's voice was barely a whisper, you are destroying relationships. Face your demons, or you will lose someone you love. As Haley revealed her final card, the room seemed to freeze. Death. Love will be the reason for your death, she said quietly. Everyone laughed nervously, but Haley couldn't shake the feeling of dread creeping into her bones. Later, they stopped at a gas station, and Paige's friend won $7,000, just as the tarot had predicted. The readings were coming true, piece by piece. That night, Haley's friend, the birthday girl, returned to the hostel. She stepped out of the shower to find a ladder descending from the attic. Her heart raced. She recalled Haley's words, do not give in to your curiosity. She tried to ignore it, but then came a knock, a loud, insistent knock at her door. When she opened it, the ladder had come down again. Fear gripped her as she approached the ladder, her pulse quickening. Something felt terribly wrong. The air around her seemed to thicken as if something unseen was watching, waiting. She climbed the ladder, driven by an inexplicable force but as she reached the attic, she froze. Standing there, in the shadows, was the high priestess, her figure ominous and threatening. 
the birthday girl screamed, her voice piercing the silence. In that moment, the high priestess attacked. She swung the ladder with terrifying force, again and again, each blow echoing through the room. The girl's cries for help were swallowed by the darkness, and in those final moments, the tarot's warning became a horrifying reality. She had fallen, her curiosity had led her to her death, just as the cards had foretold. As her friends learned of her tragic death, they believed it was nothing more than a freak accident. But deep down, Haley knew. She had seen it all in the cards. Everyone was overwhelmed with grief and worry. An unbearable silence filled the air, but no one understood the dark truth lurking behind their pain, all of this was happening because of the cursed tarot cards. As night fell, while everyone else made their way to the egg, Haley chose to stay with Paige. Paige was drowning in sorrow, devastated by the tragic loss of her dear friend. Haley, sensing her despair, began to share a haunting secret, her voice trembling with emotion. When I was young, Haley whispered, her eyes distant, I learned how to read tarot cards. Back then, my mother was very sick, and each time I read for her, the death card appeared. Over and over. I tried so hard to change it, to fight it, but every time, the same outcome haunted me. Tears glistened in her eyes as she spoke. That's when I realized, fate can't be changed. Haley's voice quivered as she tried to console Paige, if you had been with our friend that night, you wouldn't have been able to change anything, fate had already decided. Paige's heart sank as she remembered the last moments. Her friend had been returning from dropping Haley's friend at home when the demon of the tarot card, the hermit, began stalking him. His journey home should have been safe, but the hermit's eerie light guided him down the wrong path, leading him into a deadly trap. And just like that, in a cruel twist of fate, a train came barreling down, crushing him in its wake, snuffing out his life. The terrifying truth settled in Paige's mind. His death wasn't random, it was written in the cards. Every sign, every path, had led him to his tragic end. The next morning, when the news of his death reached the group, an overwhelming dread took hold of them. Their hearts raced with the realization, two friends dead in two days couldn't be a mere coincidence. Their stomachs churned with fear. What if, all of this was happening because of the readings? Whispers of doubt turned into cries of terror as they started to believe that the cursed cards were behind everything. Panic gripped them, what should they do now? They needed help, desperately. Desperation led them to scour the internet for answers, and that's when they found her, a woman with knowledge of such horrors. She was an oracle, a master of the occult. She had written about tarot cards that had caused the deaths of countless people. But when they tried to call her, there was no answer. Panic surged through them. There was no time to waste, so they made a unanimous decision, they would go to her house, no matter how far it was. As they arrived at the Oracle's isolated home, a sense of foreboding hung thick in the air. The door creaked and rattled, but she did not answer at first. They banged harder, their voices cracking with desperation. Finally, when they mentioned their friends had died and that they feared they were next, the door slowly creaked open. The oracle, her face pale and eyes filled with the weight of dark knowledge, stepped out. She led them inside and spoke in a somber tone, the tarot cards you have been reading, they are cursed. Many have died because of them before you. In Mexico, in Woodstock, and even here, in London. And I. I am the last survivor of the London case. I read everyone's cards but my own. Her voice faltered as memories of those horrific days flooded back. By the time I realized that the cards were the cause, it was too late. They had already left my possession. I've been searching for them ever since, trying to destroy them, to prevent more deaths. A heavy silence fell over the room, the weight of her words sinking in. Their hearts raced. How could they escape such a fate? The oracle continued, her voice laced with sorrow and fear, these cards were cursed centuries ago, by a king. In the 18th century, the king's astrologer foresaw the death of the queen and their child during childbirth. The king, in a blind rage, demanded the readings be changed, but fate cannot be altered. The queen and child died, as foretold, and in his madness, the king blamed the astrologer and accused him of witchcraft. 
She paused, her eyes dark with pain. The astrologer was expelled from the kingdom, but before he left, the king killed his daughter in front of him. Consumed by grief and hatred, the astrologer cursed the king and his soldiers, binding their souls to these cards. One by one, they all died, just as their readings had predicted. Her voice trembled with urgency. Now, those who use these cursed cards meet the same fate. Their deaths are inevitable, unless the cards are destroyed. The group felt a chill run down their spines as the oracle's words echoed in the room. The realization hit them hard, time was running out, and their fate was already sealed. There was only one way to survive, destroy the cards before it was too late. As the weight of everything crashed down on them, they knew one thing for sure, this nightmare was far from over. Harry and his friend nervously approached the mansion, knowing what lay inside, the cards that foretold their fate. But on the way, just as anxiety gripped them, their car came to a sudden stop on a deserted bridge. Harry's heart raced, a cold shiver running down his spine. He knew it. Something terrible was about to happen. His mind replayed the warnings he had received, the predictions were about to come true. His friend, the one they called the hangman, had been warned about technology problems. She shouldn't run, they had said. But fear took over, and despite Harry's desperate pleas, she bolted. Her footsteps echoed in the silence, and just as the readings predicted, the hangman appeared. Her death was brutal, gut-wrenching, happening right in front of their eyes. The horror of the moment left everyone paralyzed. It was now undeniable, the cards were controlling their fate, and the weight of that realization crushed their spirits. Paxton, shaken to the core, broke the silence. I can't go back to that place. I just can't, he whispered, his voice trembling. Desperation flickered in his eyes as he decided to go alone to the house, despite the warnings to avoid rash decisions. But fear clouded his judgment. As soon as he set foot inside, the fool demon appeared. Paxton's heart pounded in his chest as terror gripped him. He ran to the lift, hoping for escape, but fate had other plans. Just as foretold, he found himself trapped. And then, face to face with death, the fool stood before him. Meanwhile, Annie and the others reached the mansion, desperate to destroy the cursed tarot cards. But as they threw them into the fire, dread filled their hearts, the cards wouldn't burn. Confusion and panic washed over Annie. She immediately called Oracle, who advised them on a ritual to break the card's bond with the astrologer's soul. But no one was prepared for the power the soul wielded. When the soul materialized, it read Oracle's fate, and her final card, the Six of Swords, sealed her doom. With chilling precision, six swords pierced her, and Oracle collapsed, lifeless. Annie and her friends fled in terror, but Paige, too, couldn't escape her fate. The readings had warned her, someone would tear her apart. The magician trapped her in a box, and as she was split into two, her screams echoed through the air, followed by a deafening silence. Now death and the devil were closing in on Annie and her remaining friend. But Annie, in a flash of insight, realized there was only one way to end it all. If I can destroy the astrologer's soul, she thought, the curse will break. Determined, she faced the ultimate battle. Her friend was pulled away by the devil, leaving her to confront the soul alone. The weight of destiny crushed her, but something had changed inside Annie. She no longer believed fate was unchangeable, she was ready to fight it. As she struggled, Annie's friend returned, facing the demon head-on. While Annie readied herself for the final blow to the astrologer's soul, her last card, Death, emerged. With death looming, Annie pleaded with the soul, urging it to move on, to let go of its hold on the innocent. As the soul hesitated, death tightened its grip. But Annie's friend intervened once more, and in that crucial moment, the soul vanished. The cards disintegrated, the curse lifted, and the nightmare was over. With the end of the curse came a new beginning. Death had claimed its place, but Annie stood as the beacon of life. Just as they thought it was all over, a car approached. It was Paxton. His readings had foretold that he would return to his friends, and so he had, surviving the ordeal just as predicted. His friend had saved him from the lift at the last moment, and now the fool demon was no more. 
the cursed cards were destroyed, and the nightmare was over. Finally, peace had returned, and with it, the film's chilling story came to a close.